man, you can't even buy property without even potentially being in a standoff with the cops. Imagine touring a home up for sale and being met by police with guns drawn. It happened on Sunday in Michigan to a black realtor and his black client and the client's 15-year-old son. All right, one at a time. Man, but what's up with y'all? What's up with y'all? Welcome back to Moxie Approved. What's up with y'all, Moxie Mob? We've been having fun on these live streams and stuff like that. Please continue to help me out by pressing that like button and watching this all the way through to help me out with the algorithm, man. But what we talking about? What we talking about? In Wyoming, Michigan, uh, a couple weeks ago, a realtor Eric named Eric Brown was showing some property to uh, two black individuals, Roy Thorne and his younger son. They were there checking out the property to potentially purchase the property. At some point, the cops were called and in the middle of them checking out this property, they were in the standoff with the police from that area. Now, the way this whole situation started is that a woman uh, called the cops on these gentlemen while they were checking out this property. Last Sunday afternoon, Wyoming police officers showed up to a home on Sharon Avenue in Wyoming after receiving calls about a break-in. And what they're standing on, both the woman and the cops, is that apparently a week prior to them checking out this property, a black, a young black male, a squatter. The home had been broken into on July 24th, eight days before this incident. Was kicked off and was arrested for the property. Him and his car was towed. The cops show up and the cops confirm this lady's story. They say, yes, it was the individual from last week. We know because his car is there. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. Officers call for the three individuals to come out of the home. So they position themselves outside of the house, uh, guns pointed, and instructed these three individuals to leave the house. All right, one at a time. One by one, where they progress to handcuff all three individuals and temporarily arrest these men. Uh, the guys did what they were told. They complied as they should have. Uh, walked out of the property and explained to the cops that uh, Eric Brown was a realtor just showing the property. Neighbors are calling in that you guys are breaking into the place. I'm the realtor. After they came to this conclusion, they let the gentleman off. The officers then bring the realtor to the front of the home, take the cuffs off. Eventually, all three individuals are uncuffed and officers apologize about the incident, calling it a misunderstanding. Thank you, yeah. gentlemen. You have a better day. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> But wait, wait, wait. Before we go too far in this video, you already know what I'm about to ask. If you're a new subscriber, or if you've been watching this channel and you ain't subscribed yet, please do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna give you a second. Go ahead and do it. Do it. All right, let's go. Now, as the body cam footage was released, uh, I believe yesterday, uh, weeks later after this incident, what the cop statement on on this situation this kind of stuff just blows my mind the cops say that this situation yes it was a mistake but it had nothing to do with race yes it had nothing to do with race <laughs> we have concluded race played no role in our officers treatment of the individuals who were briefly detained and our officers responded appropriately and to me that's very telling because you don't even need a microscope for this case you don't need a microscope for this situation to see it had everything to do with race. For one, they confused these three gentlemen with the squatter from the week before. Why did they confuse them with the squatter from the week before? And explained to him that the person who previously had been arrested for breaking into the home has a similar car to his, which prompted a concerned neighbor to make the initial call to authorities. Because they were black. So that automatically is a lie. It was based definitely on race. The yeah, other officer arrested someone here a couple days ago and he was in a black Mercedes. Yeah, and my car definitely looks like a yeah. Mercedes. So. I mean, you can even look at it like this. Let's go into that whole, what if it happened to a white guy scenario. Now they say if they were white, it wouldn't have happened. If these were white men, and some, first of all, they probably wouldn't have had the cops called on them. But if someone would have called the cops on them, the cops probably would have went there. Cause remember, one of the cops identified the guys as being the squatter. They they identified him as that. So once they would have saw it was a white guy, they probably would have knocked on the door, 
you know, hey, what's going on, gentlemen? The guy would explain, here, I'm a realtor. They'd probably have been like, all right, show me your license. Yeah, you pull that out. By law, we have to carry that. Home. That's my license. Show his license. All right, y'all, y'all have a good evening. Here you see they're in a the standoff. And another reason why this definitely has something to do with race is that they confirmed it was a squatter. And that is, is, is pure lies. They confirmed it was a squatter and they confirmed it was the same car. That's a lie because that means that they didn't even look up the car's credentials. Yeah, the other officer arrested someone here a couple days ago and he was in a black Mercedes. Yeah, and my car definitely looks like a Mercedes. Because if they did, it would have been like, oh, okay, this is not the same car, all right? So that was just a pure lie. So these three gentlemen, they went on CNN and had a conversation, an interview with Don Lemon. Joining me now with their perspective, with their perspective, the perspective home buyer, Rory Thorne, his son Samuel, uh, Eric Brown, the realtor, showing the home. Thank you all for joining. Now, I'm never the a type person to be a victim blamer or blame victims or whatever you want to call it, but I believe it's Roy Thorne. He gave an answer that it always disappoints me to hear from other black people when they get interviewed about these situations. What do you want to say to the neighbor who called the police? Well, to that particular neighbor and any potential neighbor, um, my message would be. What they do is they talk in a manner to these white people like their kids or someone that just don't know no better. You know, we're just like you. Um, we occupy the same space. We do the same things. Uh, we go to the same places. Hey, we're just normal people doing normal stuff. And you know, if you see a crime, what a crime. But if you see people, black people, any minority, don't report people doing normal things. It's like when you talk to them like that, what they get to stand on is, oh yeah, I didn't know y'all were just normal people doing normal stuff. <laughs> like you do that, you don't realize that you can change their life or have their life taken. They do this because it's point blank period. They don't like you. That's why they do this. They know you're a normal person, but you're black. You kind of give them an avenue to, to walk down when you act like they're just ignorant toward this or they don't recognize who you are and what you are. They totally do. That's why they do that. I can prove it to you. Half the time when these Karens call the cops, they throw a little extra sauce on a 9-11 call. They know exactly what they're doing. Like, if I was checking out that house, you probably would have called and been like, oh, there's a suspicious gentleman there. Uh, uh, he has some weird hair. And I don't know, something's sticking out of, out of his pocket. He, he might have a gun. I think y'all need to go check on that. So then the cops show up, guns blazing, standoff, everybody on the ground with your hands up and all kinds of stuff. So together, with them working together, the Karens with the crazy 911 calls, and then the cops show up, guns blazing. It, it, it's a system that they created of this nonsense. It's, it's a flowing system that they have. It's the same system that they used on Tamir Rice. All right, the lady called the cops, said that uh, it, it was a grown man. This was a child, but he was the size of a grown man. But they said she said he was a grown man and he had a pistol. And it happened to be a toy gun. And the cops went there and shot up a child. So that's the little system that they have. But I think also... When, when we get interviewed about this as people, we need to call these people out and help hold them accountable. I don't think when we're, when we're saying that, oh, y'all need to explain, we just regular folks just like you and all that, you give them an avenue to walk down. But that's just my opinion, Moxie Mob, and it is what it is. Now, one thing that these brothers did that I actually have to commend is that they comply, all right? When you're in these situations, yeah, sometimes you wanna get mad, you know, start cussing the cops out, but it's better to comply so you can keep your life, so you can sue these cats, all right? So these cats complied, got out of the situation, and I think they're taking the right step because it's looking like they're about to sue. Because when they were on CNN, uh, the police department said that they wanted to meet with these gentlemen and talk about this mistake that they made. Here, Eric, the Wyoming police say that they, they have reached out to you and they want to meet with all three of you to discuss what happened. Um, has that been set up yet? Are you open to it? And the gentleman said this. It hasn't been set up yet, and I am definitely open to it. And I have um, had that conversation with um, with um, Chief uh, Coster. They don't want to do it without counsel. We haven't arranged it and set it up yet, and we need to arrange that with some with some counsel. 
present, our council present. Smart, smart. And if they're going to do this, if we can't make them pay criminally, make them pay civilly. Make them pay in civil court. So they're doing the right thing. Get that money. But y'all be careful out there in everything you do. Be careful out there when you're at the grocery stores. Be, be careful out there just walking down the street. Be careful out there when you're out there buying property. We can even go with what the Bible said. You gonna, every corner of this world, you're going to have problems. All right. Well, anyways, y'all know how we like to end our videos over here on Moxie Approved, right? With that water. Trust me, it's water. All right. <laughs> I see y'all here next time on Moxie Approved. Arrested while trying to buy some property while being black. I think that's what you should call it. I don't know. <laughs> I see y'all here next time.